गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग पूजा हाँ वेल ओके एम आई ऑडियबल क्लियर टू यू यस सर ओके विश्वजीत और पूजा दोनों ही केवल आए हैं ठीक है ठीक है चलिए फिर वी विल स्टार्ट सो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट जुडिशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ मराठा ड्यूरिंग शिवाजी पीरियड नाउ एंड लेट स्टार्ट विद सिविल जस्टिस so if you take an overview of the judicial administration of that period you understand that that, that, that judicial structure was very simple it looked <coughs> quite crude and a bit imperfect uh, it did not <coughs> had a lot of <coughs> elaborate codes were not written and the village community the village was the smallest unit of the administrative structure and that village community they usually settle the matter among themselves if there is any dispute uh, generally that is settled by the arbitration by the by the discussion and <clears throat> the first person in case there is any dispute in the village the first person uh, who received the complaint or to whom the complaint is to be lodged was patil patil was generally the hereditary head of the village uh and he tried to resolve that issue that matter at at his level generally you know if you now also if you go to the village generally people are lead, lead a very peaceful life uh, they have a tendency to to settle the matter by arbitration by discussion or by with the help of the elders and uh, that is a tradition which was followed during those days as well even uh, probably uh, as 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 at least now we have a lot of uh, very wide excessive network of the court and advocate uh, it was not there during those days so there was always a tendency to resolve the matter at the village level so once the complaint is received by patil he tried to resolve it as his at his level and if that cannot be done he will call the meeting of some village elders and uh, in front of that village elders <coughs> summary of the case was prepared and decision was announced by those uh, with the help of those village elders and patil uh, as i have already referred there was an attempt of arbitration discussion and uh, the attempt to resolve the issues and uh, once uh, this decision is announced by patil and the elders village elders it was duty of patil to ensure that uh, that is being followed uh, order is being uh, compiled by <coughs> by by the disputing parties and uh, in case uh, the dispute is not resolved uh, at at that level uh, then the panchayat is called so panchayat uh, is called by patil patil uh, used again you know uh, panchayat is generally <coughs> uh, the word originated from the five people so five elderly respectable people uh, of the village uh, they will gather together and there will be a you know questioning cross questioning both the parties disputing parties they will put forward their their claim their opinion and finally the decision was taken now as this is done by patil in the rural area similarly in the urban area see uh, the economy of the village was mostly agriculture based and patil used to generally hold the large amount of land and he used to have a kind of uh, uh, domination over the life of the people in the village uh, but uh, the urban centers usually the mercantile center there where uh, the business used to take place and as a result uh, the representative of the businessman uh, shethe and mahajan they, they are called mahajan is generally a person who used to lend money and during those days as as the banking network is was not extensive as we have now uh, this mahajan <coughs> that is a person, a person who lends money uh also called saukar and shethe that is a rich businessman so these people generally they had a domination over the uh, life of the people in the urban centers so if any complaint is there in the urban area uh, the person will uh, go to shethe mahajan and what patil has done in the village shethe mahajan will do in the urban area he will try to resolve the dispute as at his level first otherwise he will call some respectable uh, merchants and try to resolve the issue otherwise he will call a panchayat and uh, this decision taken at panchayat level at the village as well as in the urban center by shethe mahajan and his panchayat is uh, informed to mamladdar mamladdar used to be an officer at the district level so now here uh, the, the government appointed officers uh, that that comes into the play and uh, mamladdar uh, 
generally mamladar was having a kind of a police force with him uh, so usually mamladar will upheld the decision that is uh, taken at the panchayat level at the village as well as at the um, urban center and he will ensure that uh, that is being compiled upon and if uh, the case is very serious uh, uh, then mamladar uh, will appoint panchayat uh, and uh, the member of this panchayat will be decided by him whom to call and suggestion given by uh, disputing parties and respectable citizen you know he will respect the tradition as well as he will um, use his own discretion discre discretion uh, to appoint member of the panchayat and uh, uh, now this is a, this usually happens in the in the serious cases and this decision that is a decision of the panchayat that is appointed by mamladar finally needs approval by nadish nadish used to be the uh, very important post uh, judicial officer appointed by the state and that nadish will approve uh, finally the decision taken by the panchayat well now that that is all about the civil cases like dispute about uh, property and all uh, now let us go to the criminal uh, judicial system uh, you know here like in in modern day now we have generally a separation between the civil cases and criminal cases which was not uh, there during those days patil who used to uh, look after the civil cases civil dispute uh, at the village level was also responsible for maintaining law and order in the village uh, and he used to take the help of kulkarni chaugula and mahar so now kulkarni was a person generally who wrote the record and chaugula is a person who was a custodian of this that record and mahar was a community who played a very important role uh, in ensuring uh, that the crime did not take place. Uh, so, you know, what was the responsibility of the Mahar? Uh, he kept watch at the night, you know, the night patrolling uh, of the village, uh, then scrutinize the stranger. If any stranger comes, uh, Mahar was supposed to be responsible to keep a, keep a watch on him. And if there is any suspicious person, if somebody is, uh, you know, giving um, shelter to suspicious person, that person is to be reported to the Patil. Uh, and uh, it was also his responsibility to dictate the theft. If the theft has take, uh, taken place, um, then the Mahar uh, is supposed to uh, find out who, who is a culprit. And uh, generally, you know, uh, uh, for, for this service, the Mahar was uh, given grain uh, by the villagers. And uh, to collect his grain, his part of the grain, he will move all around the village. So there is hardly anything that he did not know in the village. He knew each and everybody. And if there is any additional person who is coming and staying in the village, that did not escape his attention. And he was a very skilled tracker. If suppose theft has taken place, he could track the you know impression of the footstep of uh, of a thief and uh, trace him yeah, and uh, if the thief has crossed his village boundary and entered into the village boundary of um, another village the mahar of that village will be now responsible to trace uh, where this thief uh, have have gone and taken shelter <coughs> And uh, generally, the last village uh, up to where uh, the footstep of a thief can be traced, that village Mahar is generally held to be responsible uh, to find out the thief. Otherwise, he will be penalized. Mm, and then, uh, well, uh, so this is at the party level. If there is a thief, if there is any crime has taken place, with the help of Mahar, with the help of Kulkarni and Chogule, uh, the party will try to resolve it at the village level. And above party, there was Mamladar. Mamladar had a small force with him to prevent any crime. And uh, uh, this uh, this is done by a party <coughs> at the village level, which is generally a peaceful small unit. Uh, but urban center used to be a more crowded place and more complex uh, population. So here there was a system of appointing Kotwal. So this Kotwal uh, was having a quite comprehensive duties. Like, you know, he will maintain the public order as well as he will super <laughs> supervise the market as well. And <coughs> he could give punishment. And the punishments like confiscation. Hello? Anything, Vishwajit? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okay, so you know the punishment like confiscation of property and the confiscation of Watan. You know, Watan was traditionally uh, traditional land that was held by the Zamindar. So, in case of serious crime, even, even the Watan was confiscated, and uh, the person can be imprisoned also if uh, the crime is uh, so serious. Well, 
and uh, generally uh, the, the kind of punishments were fine flogging mutilation of the limbs slavery sometimes the people are crime criminals are pushed into slavery sometimes they are banished uh, sometimes they are socially boycotted and in a very rare case uh, there was execution and uh, fines were generally imposed according to the financial condition of the offenders and uh, you know this adultery adultery was considered as as crime and uh, the the man is punished uh, but woman uh, generally there was a tradition that woman is not to be executed she is not to be killed by law generally there was a system of mutilation you know to insult oh they say bolte na nak kaat dena wagera na if the woman is found to be adulterous but she was not killed <coughs> uh treason murder theft and dakati Th these were considered as a, as a very serious kind of offense treason is you know uh, conspiring against the state uh, so they were punished by mutilation uh, the limbs were cut mutilation sorry <clears throat> and then highway robbery if uh, the robbers who are robbing the highway uh, if they are found uh, generally they are punished by death to to create a terror in the heart of the robbers Mm. and uh, uh brahmin offenders uh, they they are you know the execution uh, of a brahmin offenders are generally it, it is done uh, but uh, the the way the attempt is made to make it a little uh, you know less less severe for him for example he will be poisoned instead of just cutting his head or he will be starved to death he will not be given food and slowly he will die and uh, it is found, found out that ordinary prisoner who have not done a very serious crime like murder and treason they were generally well treated and uh, on special occasion they were even allowed to go home and meet their family mm, we also find in the practice there was an uh, influence of superstitious behavior superstitious for example ordeal by fire and water you know th this is definitely a uh, uh, mm, uh, very crude uh, kind of a uh, very unscientific uh, method of uh, uh, unscientific method that that can be used in ju judiciary like for example whether somebody is telling a lie or not uh, uh, you know the people will ask him okay if you are telling a truth take the name of the god and put your hand in fire if you are really telling the truth the god will save you your hand will not be burned by fire so the, the, that kind of things were done even somebody you know the the mm, the stone will be tied around his neck and he will be thrown in the water uh, and it will be said that if you are truthful if you are not done a crime if you are not done a theft uh, you will not be drowned but the god will save you so that that, that kind of evidences were also there. there there was a lot of superstitious influence of superstitious uh, even it, it is it is still there in the villages well uh, <clears throat> now uh, uh, so you know the judicial system was definitely very not well defined we come across the references like god sabha jati sabha and brahma sabha as well god sabha was a, a kind of a, a, a body of the elected uh, selected elders in, in the particular community uh, jati sabha was a same uh, like a group of uh, selected elders in in the particular caste and brahma sabha generally that used to be uh, the uh, the body of the brahmins who generally assembled in the temple to decide about the uh, <clears throat> if there is any violation of religion for example you know the, during a later period like bajirao peshwas period when uh, bajirao had uh, kept uh, mastani who was muslim uh, woman as his wife this brahma sabha has boycotted the peshwas family they decided that we will not go and perform any puja in the in the house of the brahmins even one brahmin has agreed to perform puja for the brahmin and uh, that 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 brahmin was killed by this brahmin of pune he was stoned to death mm, so you know they they had a lot of influence on on the society especially uh the, the brahmins <clears throat> and uh brahmi sabha it was mainly at the very important religious places for example in maharashtra <coughs> pathan was traditionally very famous to be a very important place of the brahma sabha ganeshwara has to go to pathan and request the brahmins to accept them as the children of the brahmin that, that is a very old story before shivaji but <clears throat> that that continued pathan 
and uh, it, it, it deals with the different cases uh, like you know if somebody has you know a brahmin is not supposed to eat meat and drink if a brahmin has done that then what kind of punishment should be given to that brahmin uh, that that kind of uh, things were dealt uh, at at this brahma sabha and uh, they generally uh, decided the cases which were mostly dependent on the uh, caste tradition uh, it was uh, it did not had a very written code uh, penal code like britishers have done later on Mm, and <clears throat> there was a system of prashita. Prashita is action for purification for transgression. You know, if somebody like, you know, Babajira Peshwa has uh, eaten meat, who, a Brahmin is not supposed to eat meat. And uh, these Brahmins, they wanted him to do the prashita. And prashita generally, you know, uh, it involved, uh, it generally it is believed that if you take prashita, uh, you, you will be purified. And it involved di different action. And one of the important thing in that was giving donation to the Brahmin. So you see that the Brahmins have made the use of this tradition uh, to, uh, to, uh, to maintain their hold on the society as well as to gain something out of it. There was also a concept of Papa and Punya and that generally influenced the decision. Something is considered as uh, Papa, then you are expected to commit Punya. And, you know, the, uh, going on pilgrimage was also considered as a prajita. For example, if you go to Kashi and come back, uh, probably you will be, you know, <clears throat> redeem of uh, your, your Papa. Whatever uh, the mistakes you have done, you will be free of it. Uh, and then... <clears throat> Mamladar, the, the officer appointed by the state, he generally ensured that uh, the decision taken by these sabhas are implemented. See, what happened is, immediately after uh, Shivaji and uh, uh, Tarabai uh, period, uh, the power has passed into the hands of the Brahmin Peshwa, and that has given, uh, uh, created a situation uh, for increasing domination of the Brahmins or the society. Uh, and that, that is the reason uh, the Brahmins, they used to claim th that, uh, go to Peshwa and said that you are Brahmin and you should protect the Brahmin Dharma. And if, even the violation of the Brahminical code from the Peshwa, uh, it, 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 in, it, it sort of censor from this Brahmin community. Well, <clears throat> Uh, there was a lot of shortcoming if you take a look and compare it with the modern system of judiciary. Like it had no standard code of procedure. What procedure is to be followed was not very standardized. It varied from place to place depending on tradition, depending on the people who are conducting uh, the judicial administration. Uh, panchayat members were not regular. They used to change frequently. And generally you can understand that if you imagine the situation around 200, 300 back, generally the wealthy people and the upper caste people, they had dominated and uh, the, the justice was not served to the lower caste and the people who were deprived of wealth and uh, deprived of the social status. <clears throat> and this panchayat had no power to ensure the implementation of their decision. They have to approach the Mamladdar. So generally you can understand that uh, in, a, in a chaotic situation like this, the people who are, you know, kind of in Hindi, it is called Dabang, who are having a kind of uh, domination, they generally ensure that justice is served uh, depending on their interest. Uh, and uh, as uh, the uh, this Patil and Panchayat, if they approach Mamladdar, it depended on Mamladdar whether he could respect that or he could just ignore it. And uh, there, there was a lot of corruption, you know. The Britishers uh, who slowly came uh, and occupied uh, Indian land, they write about this Peshwa period and uh, that there was a lot of corruption. These officers had to be bribed. Uh, the poor had no mechanism that can save them from the separation of the superior. You know, there is no mechanism. Uh, separation is it's still there. Uh, you know, the judicial structure is very costly and the poor person really had any recourse. But still, I think uh, the, during those days, it was more severe probably. I'm not sure. Mm. <clears throat> and the only guide uh, that, that, that could control this panchayat was tradition and fear of uh, losing of reputation. Uh, that had uh, controlled their behavior. and <clears throat> But despite all this, the panchayat was a very popular institution. Uh, people uh, got very quick justice and the procedure was, was very simple. So this is all about the uh, judicial administration of uh, that period. Uh, just a minute. Okay, Shweta and Swapnil have joined later on. Well, any doubt you have judicial administration? Generally, you may get short question or short note on this. Sir, I have one doubt. 
yes yes sopnil please sir uh, in this particular uh, <coughs> in this uh, in this judicial matter uh, king did not used to interfere uh, generally generally not in the in the very rarest of uh, the rarest case uh, the king uh, will interfere otherwise uh, the matter will go up to the nadish the the chief justice of uh, the state and uh, the matter will be resolved there because see during shivaji's period shivaji was uh, they, uh, rarely stayed at one place he was you know always moving around engaged in the politics and and so on and so forth so generally the, the king though he was you know the apex he controlled all all, all the power uh, uh, theoretically speaking but generally he did not interfere and uh, even though he was a king uh, the domination of the brahmin was was too much on the society so nadish used to be generally a brahmin and uh, uh, shivaji generally did not interfere uh, because he feared that it may incur uh, the the wrath of the brahmins right uh, th there are rare cases for example when netaji palkar wanted to reconvert to hinduism netaji palkar uh, he was uh, the right hand man of shivaji but he joins later on he develops some certain differences he joins adi shah and then later on mughal and under the pressure of uh, aurangzeb he became muslim mohammad quli khan was his name and he was sent uh, in the north western frontier to fight for the mughal but he was feeling always uncomfortable so one day finding a chance he runs away from mughal and come back to shivaji and uh, he wanted to reconvert to hinduism but according to the brahmin sabha according to the brahminical tradition the brahmin stated that uh, it it cannot be done once somebody has uh, become muslim he cannot be uh, made a hindu once again but shivaji intervened it is said that shivaji intervened during that in that matter and uh, he asked the brahmins that if you can try to find out certain evidences that he can be reconverted and they did that is generally used to happen if the king is willing uh the brahmin used to generally they will go through the text and find certain evidences to 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 you know to match uh, the wishes of the king but these are the rare, rarest of the rare cases generally uh, most of the things were resolved at the panchayat level and as this panchayat were dominated by the upper caste and wealthy and influential people uh, hardly you know the poor people had any say that, that is a very sad state i mean we need to accept that yeah okay okay uh, anything else श्वेता विश्वजीत पूजा नो सर नो सर ओके ओके फाइन सो आई मीन शैल वी स्टॉप हियर फॉर टुडे बिकॉज दिस वन टॉपिक इज ओवर अदरवाइज नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज दैट इज आर्मी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वेयर द फर्स्ट यस यस सर सो आई हैव यू नो डिवाइडेड दैट आर्मी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इनटू द टू पार्ट्स वन इज administration of the fort and one is army uh, administration so uh, if if you are willing we can start with uh, the administration of the forts that is uh, ad army administration part 1 today are you willing yes sir yes sir chalega chalega ha chalega na thoda sa hamara khatam ho jayega to fir aap log bhi thoda free ho jayenge just a minute sunday ko time rehta hai sunday ke din time rehta hai ha sunday ke din there is no hurry mai mujhe bhi yahi laga ये दिख रहा है ना आपको पीपीटी और मैं दोनों दिख रहे हैं दिख देख पा रहे हैं यस सर यस सर ओके ओके सो आज ये नहीं है ना आ, हमारे साथ में वो मिजो लड़की नहीं है ना तो कोई नहीं है तो आप नो नो सर शी इज नॉट हां सो वो जब रहती है तो आई एम पर्टिकुलर दैट आई शुड स्पीक ओनली इन इंग्लिश 
so that she should not be mm. felt left out. But I think now you you are comfortable in Hindi and English both. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, okay. yes, sir. No ah, so I have a habit of breaking into Hindi. I don't have to force myself. Oh well, okay, fine. <clears throat> so you know, uh, in in case of military administration, military comprises of many things. That is administration of the fort, the people who fought on the uh, you know on on the ground. Uh, but uh, the forts played very important role in the Maratha military administrative structure because you know the land where Shivaji has started his experiment of Swarajya is a mountainous land. It has a lot of mountain, and uh, even before Shivaji, the Deccani Sultanate like Adil Shahi, Nizam Shahi, uh, and Kutub Shahi, they also made a very effective use of these these hills. Uh, to defend their territory. Like, for example, if uh, you can construct a fort on the hill, uh, that fort can withstand uh, the invading army, can uh, meet the challenges of the invading army with a very small number of forts. Because, uh, you know, situated at the top, uh, you have an advantage. And secondly, you know, it's it's very difficult to shoot uh, from the bottom to the top. You are You have to shoot against the gravitational force. But it is relatively easier to shoot from the top to the bottom. If suppose the enemy is approaching, you can aim better as well as your missile, whatever you are throwing, maybe javelin or maybe stone you are throwing, that is assisted by the gravitational pull and your impact will be much more than, than the person who is throwing against the gravitational pull. So that is the reason fort had played a very important role. And uh, secondly, is that uh, this fort uh, had uh, also utility in keeping a watch over the vast territory. For example, in the territory, uh, the fort, uh, there used to be officers and there used to be uh, the offices of uh, the revenue collectors as well as uh, uh, the military commanders. And they will keep a watch over the villages if there is any invading army which is coming. Next thing is that this forts at the border <laughs> they became an important launch pad for the invasion of the enemy territory. For example, if it is a if Shivaji Swarajya, it will be having a fort on the on the border. So that that fort it serves two purposes. First thing is as a kind of defense against the invading army, and second thing is that a kind of shelter for the soldiers, so that whenever they find a situation suitable, they can sail out from the fort and attack the enemy territory. So in that way, fort had played a very important role in the military structure of the Marathas. The hills, uh, excellent defense uh, it had. And the Shivaji converted these rocks and mountain to impregnable forts uh, to, to restrict the progress, to bar the progress of the enemy in his territory. And uh, <coughs> Chitnis Bakar uh, praises the forts. They said that the forts were the really life of a kingdom. Later on, <coughs> But the fort had a very important place in the defensive warfare. We want to defend your territory. During Peshwa's period, we find that the forts, uh, the forts of Maharashtra, it, they lost its importance for the simple reason that Peshwa's under the Peshwa Marathas has become the supreme military power, and there was no uh, hardly any any power who could think about invading the Maharashtra territory. Now, on the other hand, the Marathas. Uh, under the leadership of Peshwa and different Maratha Sardar, they, they started invading the northern northern India. Uh, so he, here now uh, the warfare on the land, on the plain land, became more important because now uh, it was an uh, offensive warfare that is followed by Maharashtra Marathas to conquer the territories of uh, the Mughal. Uh, and but in case of uh, before pre Peshwa period, that is during the Shivaji and Sambaji and Tarawai period, we find that the forts have played a very important role in the defensive warfare because uh, during those period, generally the Marathas land were threatened by the enemies, first by Adil Shah and later on by the Mughal. Well, uh, uh, now <coughs> forts, uh, generally uh, Shivaji planted his forts at, at the uh, near the passes so that you know all that pass uh, that is a uh, plain narrow land between the two hills uh, from which the army can march into that passes will be watched by the forts near to that pass there will be forts and those passes can be very effectively guarded to bar the uh, entry of the enemy into the uh, Swaraj into the Maratha territories 
Mm, these forts, uh, they have traditionally played a very important role and Deccani Sultanas, they have improved it. Uh, Sabasat Bakar gives list of uh, 240 forts during Shivaji's time and Chitnis gives list of more, 317 and uh, Shiv Digvijay, another text, uh, uh, gives a list of 361 forts uh, that were held by Shivaji. Now, on each fort, Generally, uh, Shivaji uh, kept different officers, but these three officers were very important. That is, Sarnobat, he is also called Hawaldar. Now, you see, Hawaldar and Sarnobat is a designation which is used at various places. So, when we will be talking about the army, uh, that is the army which fought on the plane, uh, again, you will come across the word like Sarnobat and Hawaldar. So, uh, please don't get confused. It is the same word, but used with a different meaning diff uh, at, at different places. So, on the fort, on each fort, there used to be these three different, three important officers. That is Hawaldar, who is also called Sarnobar, then Sabnis and Karkhanis. Now, uh, this Adnyapatre, which talks about uh, Shivaji's uh, administration uh, written by Ramchandra Bandamate, we already had discussion about Adnyapatra. <clears throat> this Adnyapatra states that these three important officers should be from three different castes. You see, caste jealousy is still existing. You know, uh, probably uh, it's very difficult to throw the caste out of our mind. Uh, it, it may take centuries. And we can understand that during those days, uh, 300 years before, the caste factor was a very important uh, factor which uh, conditioned the behavior of uh, the people. So, so uh, in Adnapatra, it is said that uh, the Three, uh, the people of three different castes should be appointed to three important posts. Hawaldar used to be generally Maratha, and <coughs> Sabnis used to be generally Brahmin, and Karkhanis used to be generally Prabhu. Prabhu was another caste. And these three people, these three castes, they generally had a kind of uh, antagonism, a kind of hereditary uh, dislike for each other. And uh, having uh, three important officers from these three different castes ensured uh, the maintenance of the power balance that no uh, person of uh, no two people of one particular caste is is becoming supreme for example if you have hawaldar and sabni is both from the maratha caste it's quite possible that they, these two people will join hands together marginalize karkhanis and then uh, try to become independent or try to join hands with the with the enemy but if there is an hereditary kind of dislike for this caste uh, they will not join hands uh, but on the other hand they will be very quick to report the mistake uh, to the higher authority or, or to the king. So that is how Shivaji has, you know, used very effectively this uh, caste dislike or caste distrust uh, to, to make his administration more effective. Well, caste jealousy was used to prevent corruption as well as for rebellion. For example, Hawaldar and Sabni if they are from the same caste, probably they may indulge in corruption. Uh, but if they are from the different caste, uh, Sabni, uh, if he if he comes to know that Hawaldar is doing some corruption, he may immediately report it to the king. Well, now, and uh, see, among the Brahmins also, they had uh, different categories. For example, there is a Deshastha Brahmins, there is a Kokanastha Brahmin, and there is a Karade Brahmin. And these Brahmins, uh, uh, within the Brahmin, they also had a kind of dislike, distrust for each other, uh, kind of jealousy. And uh, Shivaji had effectively exploited that also. He will appoint if there are two Brahmins, uh, for example, apart from these three posts, there are a number of posts. So, he will ensure, ideally speaking, it, it cannot be followed 100%, but ideally speaking, he will try that not two Deshastha Brahmins are appointed on one foot, but one will be Deshastha and one will be Kokanastha, so that they will have that jealousy and <coughs> they will not unite in indulging into corruption or joining hands with the enemy. And next thing that Shivaji ensured that these fort officers, Hawaldar uh, and Sabnis and Karkhanis, they are uh, frequently transferred. Uh, he also ensured that uh, Watandar, for example, the people who are holding hereditary land from very from a very long time in the particular area, if the Watandar is serving in the Shivaji's army, uh, he will not be appointed as uh, a officer in the same area uh, that belongs to his Watan, but he will be appointed far away from his Watan. So that again ensured that he remains on the fort, he remains loyal, the probability of uh, revolt against the king and uh, joining hands with the enemy uh, became uh, less. Well, <clears throat> and According to Sabasad Bakar, these all three officers, uh, that is Hawaldar, 
Sabnis and Karkhanis, he said that they should be of the same status and uh, they will jointly look after the administration. Uh, no single person who should be allowed to become all powerful and uh, to take important decision like handing over the fort to the enemy. For example, if the fort is um, uh, sieged by the enemy and there is no way to escape or there is no way to fight now, you, you are all uh, provision is now exhausted, your all arms, ammunition is exhausted, a large number of people have been killed, but the whether we should surrender and hand over the fort to the enemy, that kind of decision, uh, one person could not take, like Havaldar could not take that decision, that decision, very important decision, decision has to be taken collectively by three people. And um, uh, during those days, Shivaji uh, need to be very careful that the corruption should not take place. And uh, Watandar is employed away from the Watan Bisa have already covered well. Now, let us start with this. Uh, let us discuss about the duties of these three important officers. So, what are the duties of the Havaldar and Sarnaubar? So, in Chitnis Bakar, uh, these duties of Havaldar were uh, discussed. He was in charge of the fort, in fact. You know, he, Mudra, uh, the, the seal of Havaldar was very important. Uh, it, it, it should be, you know, given at, at on all the important correspondence. Uh, the fort keys, it remained with him. Uh, he, he has to ensure that the gates of the fort are open in the morning at the uh, right time and they are closed uh, at, at the right time, uh, just before sunset. And he had a very strict instruction not to open the gate after sunset. And in Chitnis Bakar, whether uh, uh, Chitnis Bakar mentions about an episode, whether that episode was, was uh, really taken place, whether that episode is true or not, we, we have no um, system to verify it. But Chitnis Bakas mentioned about the episode that one day Shivaji wanted to test his Havaldar, whether he really strictly follows the instruction. And the Havaldar, they had very strict instruction that the gates of the fort are not to be open after the sunset. That Shivaji, uh, along with his a few men, he goes to one fort after sunset and he, uh, the gatekeeper from the top of the fort, the watchman, he sees that Chhatrapati Shivaji himself is there with, with the people and Shivaji sends a message to that uh, through that gatekeeper that tell Haval to open the fort gates, I want to enter the fort. And uh, Hawaldar comes uh, on the top of the gate uh, and says, Ki, uh, no, uh, I have a very strict instruction not to open the gate in, in the evening and I cannot open it even if it is Shivaji. Uh, Shivaji tries to pursue him, but he says, he, no, it cannot be done. You have to wait till morning. I will open the gate only in the morning. I can do one thing. I can send few men uh, to you uh, so that you can say spend a uh, night comfortably outside. And he does send certain things to, for Shivaji, but he doesn't allow Shivaji to enter. And then it is stated that Shivaji later on praised him and gave him, uh, gave him, uh, you know, a prize and so on and so forth. But uh, the story may or may not be true, uh, but uh, th this is the indicative that how strict Shivaji was uh, that his instruction uh, should be followed. The fort gates are not to be open after the sunset. Well, now, <clears throat> Uh, Havaldar uh, is a very important post at the fort, but sometimes, you know, if the fort is very big, so it, so it cannot be looked after by Havaldar because fort like Raigad, uh, they, it was like a city functioning within that wall. So those kind of forts, it's very difficult for one Havaldar to look after. So in that case, there will be two Havaldars and one will be out of that one will be superior. He will be called Sir Havaldar. So there could be more than one Havaldar, but there will be one Sir Havaldar who will be head of all the Havaldars. Uh, then at the same time, uh, Sarnobat or Havaldar, uh, for example, if the fort is very big, there could be a very big wall, you know, broad wall uh, covering uh, the fort protective wall. And on that wall, uh, there will be a, a Santri patrolling parties who will be marching up and down and keeping a watch over the surrounding area. And even there are certain cases that in case of such a big fort, there will be a Machi Sarnavat and Tat, Tat Sarnavat. Tat means uh, the, the fort wall. So very big wall. For example, if there are uh, four uh, direction wall, so that four direction wall will be looked after by the four Havaldar and that person is called Tat Havaldar or Tat Sarnavat. That is a person who is in charge of that one particular uh, 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 area of uh, of the wall on which uh, he has uh, to keep a watch along with his 
patrolling parties. Similarly, <coughs> Machi is an, you know, the, there is a rounded area in between the wall on which generally the cannons are mounted. That is called Machi. Uh, and generally, uh, those, those, those are the way, uh, uh, elevated area on the fort. Fort, there could be certain plain area. Uh, you, you, you climb a hill and there could be certain plain area. And after that plain area, there could be a certain highly elevated area, uh, which was considered to be very secure. And generally, the royal family, the royal palace used to be on that machi. That is a high rise area in the on the fort, and uh, in, in case of very important fort like Raigad, there will be a special Havaldar called Machi Sarnobat who will be appointed to look after that particular area, safety of that particular area. That Sarnobat, I already told you, he'll be in charge of that rampart, that that broad wall of of a particular you know uh, uh, <coughs> particular uh, section of that wall. Well. Now, that is about the duties of the Havaldar, Sar Havaldar, Tat Sarnobad, I told you, Machi Sarnobad, I told you different, different types of Sarnobad or different types of Havaldar that will be there on the forts. And now duties of Karkhanis. Karkhanis, Karkhana is something where there will be, uh, nowadays we use the word Karkhana, uh, where something is manufactured. But the Karkhana is a word which is used during those days for a storehouse, where the things or goods are stored. And th this is very important, because until unless you have proper supply for the people on the fort, uh, you, know, you, you definitely cannot survive, you definitely cannot fight war. So he was in charge of commissariat work, that is called Department of Supply of Food and Equipment. So, uh, where the grain and war material is stored in the fort, uh, he will supervise and write all the income and expenditure. You know, income will be coming uh, in the form of the tax from the surrounding region, and it will be spent or to procure uh, different things like food as well as the war material required for the defense of the forts. Uh, distribution of the store, uh, he whatever is there in the store, uh, it, uh, the, the way it could be food, it could be war material, it could be equipment that is to be uh, distributed among the people, the fighting forces and the families staying on the fort. Uh, so, but he has to ensure that it is done in the in the presence of the clerk of subnis. What what were the duties of the subnis will be will be uh, coming to it later on. But subnis will appoint his clerk, and in the presence of that clerk, the equipments are to be distributed. So, you know, you see that this watch uh, and uh, uh, the balance uh, system is is maintained uh, by Shivaji. Uh, he could place an order for goods and commodities required for the fort, uh, but they need to be approved by Sublis and Havaldar. Karakhan is by his own cannot place an order for the equipment and good. Uh, he will prepare an order, but that will be supervised, that will be, uh, Sublis will go through the order and then up, uh, write his approval, put his seal, and then later on it will go to Havaldar. Havaldar will also see uh, what, what kind of goods are being ordered by Karakhanis and he will also put his seal and signature. So, Karkhanis, in case of war, you know, during those days, many people are enslaved uh, during the time of the war. So, if the female slave and the boy servant or cattle, if they are being caught during the time of the war, uh, he will take charge of that. Uh, uh, but this goes big contrast because Shivaji uh, in his Agnapatra says that uh, the woman is not to be captured during the time of the war. You can capture the man, uh, you can capture the bull, but the woman... Brahmins and cows are not to be captured. That was the instruction. But nevertheless, uh, uh, I am not sure of, uh, the administrative structure that we try to understand. Seems to be pretty, pretty complex and it was not definitely very streamlined. But nevertheless, uh, he was in charge of uh, all these things. He made slave, boy, servant and cattle. Uh, he will supervise the construction work on the fold and he, he will supervise, but that will be again inspected by Sabnis. He just cannot approve and uh, he is his seal and signature is not final. Submit has to approve that the construction work is done properly. Now comes the duties of Submit. We are talking about Havaldar, Karakhanis, and Submit is the third important officer on the fort. And he was in charge of accounts. Uh, and he will prepare the estimate of the revenue under the jurisdiction of the fort. Fort had his jurisdiction, his area, and uh, all the uh, account will be prepared by Submit. He inspect the account of the Karkhanis. You know, Karkhanis will order and have his equipment stored, and there will be a list where the uh, equipment has been distributed. Submit will check all that accounts. Uh, he will maintain the muster roll. Muster roll is nothing but list of the soldiers who were serving on the fort. So he will maintain the muster roll, and on each order, this I already covered. On each order for store, it will be 
हवालदार सबनीस एंड कारखानिस दे थ्री ऑफ देम विल पुट देयर सील एंड द डेली अकाउंट ऑफ दिस टू डिपार्टमेंट लाइक यू नो द रेवेन्यू एंड एक्सपेंडिचर दैट इज अ वन थिंग एंड द स्टोर अकाउंट दैट इज अनदर थिंग सो uh they 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 will be jointly uh, done by karkhanis and sabnis karkhanis will make uh, for equipment uh, the, the, that is the storehouse and sabnis will supervise it and sabnis will make uh, the another account of uh, complete revenue and expenditure and uh, they both has to sign uh, the account so again you know the check and balance system is is being followed um <clears throat> all the expenditure has to be you know approved by sabnis without sabnis uh, seal of the sabnis expenditure cannot be done and uh, uh, if there is any order uh, that that should go for the district uh, under the control of the courts that order should be also signed by three for example if there is an any innovation and uh, some order is to be passed for the safety uh, or uh, tax says are to be you know increase or something of that sort that has to be jointly done by these three people uh, now again as the account of the karkhani is is supervised by sabnis sabnis is supposed to make the muster roll as i already told you that is a list of uh, the soldier and how much salary is to be paid to them that is again uh, rechecked by karkhanis before the salary is approved mm, now <clears throat> Sabnis is mainly responsible to give answer to any query related to account. Havaldar may ask him uh, about the account, and Sabnis was responsible. Similarly, if there is any other district authority appointed by the state, maybe you know tax collector uh, or the central authority by the king's office, uh, that account uh, has to be finally uh, answered by account queries has to be finally answered by Sabnis. All correspondence will be drafted by Sabnis. Sabnis will draft all the correspondence. He will put his sign. and then finally uh, subedar will uh, also seal the letter you know the, if, if the correspondence is important all three will put his seal subedar will seal the letter and karkhanis will make entry in the ledger that is a register where uh, the incoming and outgoing correspondence are are entered so they ensure that uh, the things are uh, you know more or less uh, runs uh, quite smoothly shivaji was considered to be genius of his time and he put his head to details on of uh, about the administration of the court mm, so this check and balance i have already told you uh, shivaji generally he kept his forts well provision he understood the importance of the fort and he generally sanction a very huge amount uh, for the upkeep of the forts uh, and the importance of the fort is that it uh, usually uh, with a very small number of people you can fight against a big army so generally the forts are uh, manned by 500 people but uh, the big forts like purandar uh, they had more people like 1000 and raigarh was of course later on became capital they were having much larger number of people uh, and depending on the situation depending on the war situation uh, the number of the soldiers were increased uh, the stones and boulders they were accumulated uh, on on the on the forts so that they can be thrown at the approaching enemy and uh, there are, there are mention of the artillery also you know the, some of the fort during shivaji's time did have cannons uh, then uh, uh, related to fort there were people uh, who will call ramoshis like you know we have discussed about the mahar in the, in the judicial administration so these ramoshis they were uh, they performed the duties of the watchman of the fort generally they stayed at the fort uh, you know at the foot of the fort there will be villages so these ramoshis they really stayed in those villages and they kept watch over the they performed the duties of the watchman and uh, in the like you know hierarchy uh, for every nine soldiers on the fort there will be one nayak one nayak he will command nine soldiers and uh, on the forts also there will be musketers musketers is is person who uh, fight with the gun who are good shooter so musket is you know muzzle loaded gun the gun during those days used to be very big gun and they they have to be loaded from the top of the barrel um so uh, the musketers will be there on the forts there will be spear man who find with the spear the long arm and the archers and the light arm man uh, <clears throat> the fort as it was very important generally the officers at the fort were selected by the king themselves and the uh, important administration administrative post like sarnobat is given to the person uh, who is recommended by another higher uh, Uh, the person who is quite high in the administration and he takes guarantee 
that this sir no will, uh, will remain loyal this havaldar will remain loyal as havaldar was a very important post and the people of the forts are generally called gadkari and uh, the uh, generally we get references that on the fort there will be brahmin who will perform puja and other religious ritual there will be jyotishi the, there was a lot of influence of superstitious so he will tell about future there will be vaidya doctor who will treat the people there will be blacksmith who will repair the arms who will manufacture the new swords and other arms there will be carpenter and there will be cobbler so all, all these kind of people they used to stay on the on the fort and collectively they are called as gadkari and <clears throat> we get references that on an average havaldar uh, the in charge of the fort was generally paid 125 hoons per year and uh, this post were definitely not hereditary shivaji was against having anything hereditary continuation of the office uh, but generally appointed for their own life lifetime and if they die uh, the it's not necessary that uh, his son will become avaldar uh, it could be another person so this is all about the administration of the fort um, any doubt you have if you have any doubt let me ask me one Yes, Vishwajit, Subnil, Puja. Anybody about the fort administration? You want anything to be repeated? No, sir. No. Okay. Okay. Fine then. So, sir, where... who supervised the Nikes? Ah, uh, Nike on on the top of the Nike. It is Havaldar. Okay, sir. Ah, so each Nike will be having nine 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 nine. Soldiers under him, and uh, the, those knights will be supervised by how Allah, right? All right, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hello, uh, yeah. am I audible? Ah, uh, uh, yes, Sopnil, yes, tell me. Sir, uh, all these forts were constructed at the time of Shivaji Maharaj, or they were already earlier already they were existing. No, may, many many of them were existing. They many of them were you know it, it's many forts. They have a very old history. There are certain forts which uh, existed uh, from uh, Yadavas period, uh, which was in the 13th, 14th century, and then they were occupied by these Deccari Sultanate like Adil Shah in Nizam Shah, right? And then uh, later on they were conquered by Shivaji, and Shivaji repaired those forts, and then he constructed certain new. For example, Rajgarh is constructed by Shivaji. Then um, uh, Raigad is constructed by Shivaji. Raigad was having a very that that, that is a uh, Rairi fort, which was a very crude fort. But Shivaji expanded it and made it as as his capital. But Pannada was there. Pannada is very old fort, and uh, Shivaji has conquered it from Adil Shah, right? Okay, sir. <coughs> sir, uh, Shivaji Maharaj also had navy. Yeah, we will be talking about it. Like in the next class, we will be talking about uh, in his army administration. Uh, there are two parts: that is fort, and then army which used to fight. And then the third, there is a separate naval administration which I will be covering up. He did had navy, right? right. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you, you, sir. So I am closing for today. So I'll I'll let you know about the next class. Uh, please keep looking for a message in in our group, right? Yes, sir. All right. Chalega, bilkul. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Sir. Have a nice. Day. Good day. You too, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye.